This is KGW News at Sunrise. And good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. Coming up on Sunrise, the latest on two deadly shootings that happened in just 24 hours in Portland. Plus, hear part of our conversation with Mayor Ted Wheeler, what he has to say about the current state of the homeless crisis in Portland. Now let's get a look outside. It is a beautiful morning out there for a Saturday. Here's Matt Zafino with a first look at weather. Hey, good morning, everybody. You would think for the second weekend in April, we'd have better weather for you than this, but it's cold out there right now. Temperatures in the 30s, and we're only going to top out at about 51 this afternoon. Now, we've had a few sun breaks, or we will have a few sun breaks during the day, but lots of showers, and there is the potential for a thunderstorm pretty much any time of the day, but especially in the afternoon uh, over the valleys and any time at the coast. So, yeah, it's going to be a cool one. Lots of showers coming and going today, and then tomorrow, even more showers, and then we've got to watch the potential for some very windy weather developing late Sunday afternoon and Sunday night as another system develops and moves somewhere on the Oregon Washington coast. If it moves inland to our north, then it's going to get really windy here. But look at tomorrow's high only 47. Remember, it was just Thursday when we had temperatures in the valley that were 30 degrees warmer than that. Remember, we we're in the 70s. I know it's hard to remember because it'll be so cool all weekend long. Also, the snow level tomorrow down to about 500 feet, so there could be some snowflakes mixed in as well. Uh, the skiing is going to be phenomenal all weekend long with this cool weather. Feet of snow on the way to the Cascades as our air just keeps on dropping down from the north. Looks like we may get a warm up towards the end of the week and next weekend. All right, Matt, thanks a lot. Overnight, five people were hurt in a crash involving two cars on Highway 217 North near 72nd Avenue. You see a picture of that scene right there. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue says crews used the jaws of life to free two people. They got trapped inside the wreckage. They're both being treated at the hospital. Well, we are learning more about two deadly shootings that happened in less than 24 hours in Portland. The most recent happened early yesterday afternoon right under the Burnside Bridge. That's just steps away from where the Portland Saturday market will open in just a few hours from now. Mike Benner has the story. An all too familiar sight in Portland, but not always in broad daylight. Crime tape blocks off a stretch of southwest NATO near Burnside following an early afternoon shooting. I heard a bang before. I had my headphones on. So I took out one headphone and I was like, okay, I didn't hear no screams or nothing. Benito Zarita may not have heard any screams, but he saw a man who had been shot and he says there was a lot of blood. He did drop right there next to the bridge. When I seen him drop in the ground, I was like, hey, you know, man, stay awake. Don't, 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 um, just lay down. According to police, the victim was badly hurt and rushed to the hospital where he later died. We're told one person was detained for questioning. This comes just hours after another shooting in downtown Portland. Investigators say somebody was shot and killed near Northwest 6th and Burnside late Thursday night. What are we waiting for to get something done and to you know, have accountability. Diana Gladden is the general manager of Portland's Saturday Market. She's had enough of the gun violence, and boy, have we seen a lot of it. This year alone, there have been more than 400 shootings and at least 24 people killed in that gunfire. I don't want my hands tied because the city can't do anything or the leadership can't do anything, but what can we do? Let us know what can we do. A sentiment echoed by Benito Zarita, who for the first time experienced the terror of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I kind of feel that, 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 that I could have got shot too, man. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. Also in your headlines this morning, or. Need your help with the information on a shooting that happened in Marion County on I-5 between Wilsonville and Salem. They released photos of two cars they say are involved, and you see the photos there. The only other information from police is that the two drivers got into an argument at 8.50 yesterday morning before it happened. If you have any information, call Oregon State Police. Now, Portland police have tracked down more than $100,000 in stolen property, all while trying to find some missing guitars. In November, someone broke into a storage unit for the Oregon Music Hall of Fame and stole 70 signed guitars like these. Uh, yesterday, investigators found one of them at a home in Northeast Portland. Along the way, they've also uncovered $25,000 in stolen coolers and a stash of other stolen guitars and memorabilia. 
Well, Portland City Council rejected a proposal to redistribute, uh, redistribute $2.5 billion to end homelessness. Lobbying group People for Portland submitted the proposal. It requested 75% of the Metro homelessness tax be used to create or operate short-term shelters. The initiative received pushback from the coalition that crafted the homeless services tax. They argued it would do little to get people into permanent housing. And speaking of housing, earlier this week we saw advocates put up large shelters in the North Park blocks, only for the city to remove them just a few days later. It's just one example of the friction around this issue. And it gave our Pat Doris a jumping off point to ask Mayor Ted Wheeler if he thinks the city is making progress when it comes to the crisis. Here's part of that conversation. Homeless issues. Public very much fired up about that. Uh, you've, as you mentioned, had to take some emergency orders to try and streamline and centralize things. How do you think that's going? I think it's going really well. Um, the uh, first emergency directive that I passed was to remove people from high crash corridors, dangerous locations where it just isn't safe to pitch a tent. And I will say that we just went by the Powell Boulevard off-ramp from 205 where someone was killed a couple of months ago up on the shoulder there. Uh, and there's maybe one tent, but there used to be a lot more. So we have seen some progress there. Yeah, and, and we'll, uh, part of the difference is we're actually going to go back and we're going to make sure that those sites are maintained. Uh, so thanks for the insight. Um, but it's not safe. I mean, just a few weeks ago in Salem, a number of people were killed when a car ran off the road and went right through a homeless camp. That, that is proof that moving people out of those high crash corridors makes sense, even though I obviously took a lot of heat for it. The second directive was also really important. That's around making sure that we can site sanctioned, managed camps quickly, as opposed to uh, having to go through all kinds of hoops and hurdles that, that we typically do today. And the third was to, and probably the most important and the least talked about, was to create a war room, to create a street services coordination center where all of our city bureaus come together every day and talk about where the hot spots are and where we need to intervene and where we need to clean up, where we need to remediate, and where we need to connect people with services. And that is already um, in the works, that's going to be launched next week, is my understanding, and I expect that to have a huge impact, just in terms of how the city addresses homelessness issues. Hey, could, you can check out the story every weekday at 6 for in-depth reporting on the big issues of the day like that one. Well, coming up, we're talking opening day for the Hillsboro Hops. The team unfortunately lost last night, but there's still plenty of games and fun to look forward to this season. A preview of what you can expect. That's just ahead.